Hi guys, welcome to Sigma Maths. This is the fifth video in the Exponentials and Logs series and we will be looking at using logs um, on non-linear data. Now as you can see from the specification in front of you, you are expected to be able to use logs on both polynomial and exponential functions. Now before we start, let's just quickly talk about what we're actually doing. We are trying to fit a model to a set of data. Now you would have seen this before in the form of having a scatter graph and then drawing a line of best fit on the scatter graph so that you can then work out an equation that links your independent and dependent variables. Now with a straight line it's fairly easy to work out the equation because you just need to find the gradient and at least one point that the line goes through. However if you have non-linear data it is quite a bit more difficult to come up with a curve of best fit and find the equation of the curve, so find the value of the parameters that fit that curve in order to produce your model. What we can do is apply logs to one or both of the variables involved and this has the effect of flattening out the data, taking it from being a non-linear relationship, either polynomial or exponential, to a straight line we can then use the process of finding the equation of the straight line and then work backwards to find the parameters of the original model. So we're going to start by looking at the polynomial um, model. So here I've got the y equals ax to the n to represent a general polynomial function for which we might be trying to fit to some data set. Now in order to linearize this, we are going to need to apply logs to both sides of the equation. And the process that we're about to go through is one that you'll probably want to write out in every question that you do on this. So you're showing the examiner how you understand how to get from a polynomial to a linear equation. So we're going to start by applying logs to both sides. Now it doesn't matter what base you use as long as you use the same base on both sides. But as a standard, we are going to be using just log, which you'll know from previous videos, means log base 10. So the first step is just to apply log to both sides of the equation. There's not much we can do on the left-hand side, so we just leave that as log y. But on the right-hand side, we can break apart the ax to the n using our log laws. Now, you have to be careful here because there is a common mistake that happens, and that's to see the uh, power of n and think straight away, I can bring that power of n down in front of my log. Now, there is a law that says you can bring the power down in front of a log, but that power has to have been applied to everything inside the log. And the a here is not part of that. The a is not raised to the power of n. So we actually have to split apart the a from the x to the n before we can bring the n down. So we'll do that step first. So multiplication inside the log is addition outside. So we have log base a plus log, sorry, not log base a, log a, uh, plus log x to the n. Okay, now on the next line, we can bring that power of n down, n log x. Okay, so may, it may not be immediately familiar to you as being a straight line graph, but what we can do here is effectively a transformation. So we can call um, log y, capital Y, and we can call log x, capital X. And then to make this familiar to you, the number in front of log X, which is N here, I'm just going to call that M so that we get the MX part of the straight line graph, the straight line equation we're used to seeing. And the log A is just a constant, so I'm going to call that C. So what we've really got here is Y equals MX plus C. Now if we look at this on a diagram, you can see that y normally represents what goes in the vertical axis. So we have log y on the vertical axis here instead of what would normally be y. And x represents what goes in the horizontal axis. So here we have log x on the horizontal. And then literally comparing it to y equals mx plus c, log a would therefore be our intercept. So that would be c. And m, the gradient, would be n in our original model. Okay, so the log a and the n link straight back to the y equals ax to the n. So here, if we knew what our intercept was, 
as a number, we would be able to work backwards and work out what a is. And if we knew the gradient of the straight line, in this case, in the polynomial one, the gradient of the straight line will just be the power, the n, in the original model. Okay, so what we see here with polynomial is that we have to log both the dependent and independent variables to produce a straight line graph. Right, let's have a look at an exponential model. So y equals kb to the x. So the difference here is that our independent variable is in the exponent, is in the power, whereas in the polynomial functions, it was uh, a base number. So it was not in the power. Right, we're going to do the same process. So log y equals log kb to the x. Again, we're going to split apart the multiplication first, log b to the x, and then we can finally bring down the power. So it's exactly the same process as the polynomial, and the difference here is where the x ends up. So in the polynomial, x was locked inside a log. Here for an exponential, x comes out the front of the log, so our um, graphs, the, the, the labels on our axes are going to look a bit different this time. So let's just do the same thing that we did before. So we've got capital Y, that's basically saying that log Y is going to represent our vertical axis. And then MX, but this time it is just little x that equals capital X here. Um, and M is log B. So looking at that on a graph, okay, so again, You'll see for both of these, our vertical axis is replaced with log of the dependent variable. Um, and the difference is that on the independent axes, if it's an exponential model that we're looking at, that transforms to give exactly the same variable on the x-axis. So that's how we can spot the difference between a polynomial model and an exponential model. We have to look at the x-axis and see whether the independent variable has also been logged or whether it's been left the same. And then you've also got the difference in the gradients. So for a polynomial, the gradient linked straight back to one of the parameters in the original model. But for exponential, the gradient is actually log of one of the parameters in the original model. So you really do have to be very clear which one you are looking at. Okay, so we're going to have a look at a couple of examples now so that we can see um, how the exam board is going to test your knowledge on this. Okay, so let's have a look at this question. Uh, we are told that the heights and masses of a sample of penguins has been measured, so we've got a bunch of data collected, um, there's a suspicion that the data fits a model of the form m equals a h to the n. So seeing as our variables here are m and h, that means that this is a polynomial model. Polynomial. And based on that, we are expecting that log of both m and h, I'm sorry, m, yeah, m and h has occurred. Um, and then we can see the question there is as we expected. Both of the x and y axes have been logged in order to produce a straight line graph. So this all links together. This is all seeming like it makes sense. Now they've told us the intercept of the straight line and in the question, the graph has a gradient of 1.2, we have got um, m as well. So we've got m and we've got c. Now they've asked us to write down the equation of the line. So there is a common mistake that people make here. We are so used to writing y equals mx plus c that as soon as we know we're writing a straight line graph and we've got an m and a c, it is so tempting to write down y equals 1.2x plus 0.03. Okay, another thing that's tempting to write down is a, a similar thing, but thinking, wait a minute, I'm working in h's and m's. So maybe someone might write down m equals 1.2h plus 0.03. Okay, this is slightly better because at least it uses the original um, variables. Both of them, however, are not correct. Okay, we need to be very careful. We have got to make sure that the independent and dependent variables in our straight line equation relate to what we see on the vertical and horizontal axes. 
So instead of y, we have log m. And, and they've got gradient here, 1.2. And instead of x, we have log h. Okay, this is very important, especially for the next step and the next part. Um, we're going to really get ourselves confused if we do not have this equation in the right form. We're also not going to get the marks. Okay, so part B, find the exact value of n and a. Okay, this is where we go, okay, well, n and a come from the original model. m equals a h to the n. And I think it's easier to go through that process we, we did in the, on the earlier slide um, and apply logs to this and relate it back rather than starting with the equation in part a and trying to make it look like the original model. So I'm talking about applying logs to both sides. And this can be also be something that you do in every question. So it will become incredibly familiar to you. And you'll make sure that you don't make that mistake of bringing the n down before you split apart. The multiplication here so n log h okay now we're going to make a direct comparison with the equation in part a so we have got a number here in front of log h that must be equivalent to whatever we've got in front of log h in our equation here so this tells us that straight away n is 1.2 and this, uh, this seems correct because if we remember before when we were talking about polynomial models, um, we had that the gradient was equal to the power in the polynomial. So here, the gradient 1.2 equal to the power n in the original model. Uh, we also have this, a constant term. We're relating that to the constant term in the original, in, in the uh, sorry straight line equation. So if we write that down, we get log a equals 0 0.03. Remember, we're working in base 10. So we're going to do a equals 10 to the 0 0.03. Okay, and it says to four decimal places. So that will be uh, 1.0, so stick in your calculator, 1.0715. And there we go, we've got our two answers. Um, just uh, so we can see what we've actually done here, if we rewrite out the model, it basically means that um, the mass of a penguin, m, is equal to 1.075, oh, 715 multiplied by h to the power of 1.2. So this would now be the equation that we could use to work out the mass of a penguin with any given height. Okay, let's do another question so we can see the other type. So this, let's have a look at this one. No graph given to us this time. I can see an equation of a straight line in there though. So we are looking at the growth rate of a colony of bacteria and how it's affected by the temperature T. Um, we've had, an, uh, and data is encoded using this transformation, y equals log G and x equals T. Now straight away, we're noticing that it's only the dependent variable that has had log applied to it. The independent variable has been left alone. So this is a big clue to us that we're working with what was originally an exponential model and has been brought down to a straight line graph using logs. We've been given the equation of the line of best fit. Okay, fine. And part A is saying, um, we've got Sarah says that the colony is shrinking when the temperature is zero, and she thinks that because of this negative 0 0.1459. Okay, so she's looked at this and said, okay, so x equals t, when t is zero, but x is zero, that term disappears, I get a negative minus 0 0.1459, that must mean the colony is shrinking because we're talking about growth rate here, if growth rate's negative, that means it's decreasing. We're told to explain why Sarah is wrong, so we know this is, clearly isn't correct, and if we think about it, then when t equals x equals 0, y is negative 0.1459, which is not the growth rate. Okay, this is the mistake that Sarah has made. She has forgotten that y does not represent the growth rate. It is in fact log g that equals minus 0.1459. And if you wanted to work out the growth rate when the temperature was zero, 
you would have to do 10 to the minus 0 0.1459, which is most definitely positive. This explains why she is wrong, because it means that the growth rate is actually positive, so positive growth rate when t equals 0 degrees Celsius. Okay. Right, part B then. Uh, the growth rate can be modelled by the equation of the form G equals P Q to the T. So this is an example of an exponential equation, just as we suspected, uh, based on the fact that we only had the independent variable, oh, sorry, the dependent variable um, that had log applied to it. So this is where we're going to do that comparison, like we did in the last question. So we're going to need to turn the original model equation into a linear one using logs. So we're going to get log of p q to the t, split those apart, log g equals log p plus t log q, there we go. Okay, so making the comparisons again, so this is comparing it back up to this equation up here. Then we've got, let's start with the gradient, number in front of x, which here would be the number in front of t because x equals t. So this means we can write that log q is the 0 0.0631. Therefore, q is 10 to the 0 0.0631, which is 1.16 to three significant figures. Make sure you pay attention to the question and what level of accuracy they are asking for. And then we also have the constant term. So log p uh, will be equal to the negative 0 0.1459. So log p negative 0 0.1459. Same process, raise that up to the power of 10, negative 0 0.1459. And that comes out as 0 0.715. So again, I always like to write out the model just so I can go, okay, this is what I've, this is the purpose of what I've done. I've been able to work out the parameters of the original model that fits this data. So we have G equals 0.715 multiplied by 1.16 to the power of T. So always look out as well for any questions where you're asked to interpret what these values actually mean. So here, the number in the front, which will always be the case of an exponential model. This is a value that you get for the dependent variable when the independent variable is zero. So this would be the uh, rate when the temperature is zero degrees. And then this number here for an exponential model, this is what, if you wrote, you know, if you wrote the, the growth rate out for t equals one, t equals two, t equals three, um, then each time you'd be multiplying by an extra 1.16. So this tells us that there's a 16% because it times in by 1.16 is a 16% increase in in the growth rate for every degree. In this case, every degree. Because that's what T is measured in. Okay, so you can just think carefully about the model. And what we will do another video where we focus in on modeling with exponentials and logs so we'll talk more about this kind of thing but they do like to bring these questions in to the logs with nonlinear data questions where you just have to think back into the context of the question what does this actually mean what is it doing to the numbers okay so that brings us to the end of this video um, there will be a second video where we practice uh, the uh, practice a range of questions on just the logs and linear data section of the exponentials and logs and then after that like i just mentioned we will have a video focused entirely on just modeling um, various types of models with both exponentials and logs so if you found the video helpful please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you would like to see more Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.